G'day guys, welcome back to Reach Me or Teach Me. Uh, excited today to have a look at the rules of American football, as explained by Nin. I've already done another video by his on the code and the NHL ice hockey and the fighting behind the rules behind the fighting. So super excited to do this. I wanted to learn about the game. I really want to learn about ice hockey as well. I know baseball a little bit and I really know basketball. I've watched it for a long time. Uh, but very happy to check out the rules of American football. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell, guys. It all helps the channel grow. Nin explains the rules of American football. The object of the game is for your team to score more points than the opposing team. Obviously. Teams are made up of 46 players in the NFL, with 11 players taking to the field at any one time. Wow, like I knew you guys had big squads. Um, like comparatively speaking, Rugby League has 13 players on the field, so we actually have more players on the field. But the whole squad is only four players. There's only four people that sit on the bench as substitutes. And if somebody gets injured, then, like, all oh, they'll swap them out when they get tired. But it's, like, there are, I won't say it's common, but there are games that happen reasonably regularly in as much as you get one a season, maybe a couple every now and again a season, where teams don't have enough players to actually field a full team. And they'll, instead of having 13 players on the field, they'll have 12 on the field for the last 10 minutes because they've had a, a string of injuries and they just don't have the players. But you guys got 46 players in a squad. Now, okay, you've got your offense and your defense, but if there's only 11 players on the field, that's still only 22. And I know you've got special teams, but isn't that just your kicking? Um, I don't know what else would fall on your special teams, but, like, so far I'm saying maybe 25 players, and then you've got, a, like, almost double that, as I'm guessing, substitutes and, and bench warmers. Does that mean there's a lot of players on a team that just never see any action? The field is 100 yards long by 53 yards wide, with two 10-yard end zones at each end. White markings on the field help players, referees and spectators keep a track of what's going on. The game starts with a kickoff. The team with possession of the ball is known as the offense, and the team without the ball is the defense. The job of the offense is to move the ball up the field and try and score points. This can be done by either running forwards with the ball, or by throwing it up the field for a teammate to catch. The offense is given four chances, or four downs, to make at least ten yards. Mm -hmm. okay. if the offense so I am familiar with that concept, that they have to make at least ten yards within those four downs. Um, and they quite often will kick on the fourth down because there's a risk that if they don't make it, then it's changeover. This manages to move the ball 10 yards or more, they will retain possession of the ball whilst giving another four downs to make another 10 yards. On your TV screen, you will see this graphic. This tells you what down the team is on, and this tells you how many yards they need to make. If you're also watching this on TV, they will also show you the lines they need to cross in order to make their downs. The defense's job is to stop the offense moving the ball forwards by tackling. Isn't that more than... hang on. If I go back... <clears throat> so the, oh, that one's good. So the blue and yellow lines here... Oh, because it's 2nd and 6. My bad, I didn't look at that. And that's 2nd and I'm guessing 12. So they've actually gone backwards by 2 yards. Oops, my bad. Cling. This includes pulling them to the ground, stopping them from moving forward, or forcing them off the field. If the offense fails to move the ball 10 yards within 4 downs, the ball is given to the defending team at that point. The defending team will then bring on their offensive players and try and move the ball in the opposite direction so that they can score. You will most likely see the offense kick the ball away on fourth down to make it more difficult for the other team to score. Teams will usually have three different units of 11 players that come on the field at different times. They include the offense. These players will usually come on the field when they have possession of the ball. The offensive unit consists of... Aha. Let me see if I can guess this. So you got wide receiver, wide receiver, you got quarterback, you got fullback, you got running back. So this is odd to us. The fullback is the the one at the very back in our codes. Then you got obviously offensive tackle, offensive guard, offensive center tackle, and then tight end. So there's only one tight end. They must have a very specific role, I'm guessing. So the two wide receivers, I'm guessing they'll blitz up either side and then cut back in. 
the tight end. So obviously your offensive tackles, guard centers, they're they're trying to stop the defensive uh, linesmen, whatever they're called, from getting through to the, the quarterback. So is the tight end's job to protect the wide receiver? Is that his primary role? I'm guessing fullback and running back, I'm guessing they provide running options for the quarterback to like hand off or lateral. These positions. The quarterback is the most important player on the field as he's the one who decides to pass the ball up the field, hand it off to a teammate so that they can run with it, or decide to run with it himself. So in that previous one, that looked like he handed it off to what would be the fullback. The field, hand it off to this one. So if he's the quarterback, the guy directly behind him would be the fullback. Teammate so that they can run with it, or decide to run with it himself. These offensive line positions are usually responsible for protecting the quarterback. The wide receivers are responsible for running down the field to catch the ball thrown by the quarterback. The tight end is responsible for blocking and also catching the ball in the middle of the field. And the running back and fullback is responsible for running with the ball up the field. Ha! Nailed it! The defense. I should do my own tutorial video on this. These plays will usually come on the field when the other team has the ball. The defensive unit consists of these... Ah, uh, oh, okay, so... I'm guessing defensive end, defensive tackle, defensive end, def uh, sorry, 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 linebacker, linebacker, linebacker. Safety, safety, cornerback, cornerback. So again, your defensive end, tackle, tackle, and end. I'm guessing they're going to meet the... I can't remember the names of them already. They're going to meet the offensive front line, head on, head on. The linebackers are going to try and slip through the gaps, are they? Like maybe slip one slips through, the others try and go around, or do they all try and slip through those gaps? Safeties, I'm guessing, they rush around and do that. Is that is that the blitz? And the cornerbacks, I'm assuming, would drop back to protect the wide receivers. Uh, to not protect them, to try and get intercepts and stop the wide receiver getting down the field. Let's see how I go on this. Positions. The defensive line is responsible for moving past the offensive line. The linebackers stop running backs coming through the defensive line, and they're also uh -huh. responsible for attacking the quarterback. Okay. The cornerbacks yep. try and stop the wide receivers, yes. and the safeties try and stop the pass up the middle of the field. Okay. Special teams. Special teams are specialist players that come on the field when there's a kick involved. Within the special teams is a mixture of offensive and defensive players mixed with either a punter or kicker for offense. Are those players usually taken from the primary primary offensive teams, or is there a specialist team? Like he said, 11, 11, 11. So is there 11 people on the special special teams group? Um, like, is there players that all their job is to specifically chase the kick and tackle the, the kick returner? or And then that's it. Once that play's over, they're off, and the normal defensive unit comes on. Or do they just pull out their best defenders and you know a couple of really fast guys from the offense to chase a kick or something? Offense, or a punt returner for defense. Now you know what all the players do and how the game is played. But how do you score? In American football, there's four different ways of scoring. Number one, a touchdown. The main way of scoring is via a touchdown. If the ball is carried into the end zone area or thrown and caught in the end zone, this is a touchdown and is worth six points. Unlike in rugby, you don't need to touch the ball down onto the ground. All you have to do is cross the line with the nose of the ball to score. Number two, extra points. Once a touchdown has been scored... Wait, so the whole ball doesn't even have to go over, just the very tip nose of the ball has to have made it. So, in an instance where the ball... The, the offensive player gets tackled and he reaches out and tries to put... And the ball is literally on the line. Is that considered a touchdown? Or do they have, you know, four and one? Or one and one? First Scored, and one. you have the option of kicking it through the uprights for an extra point, or try and pass or run the ball into the end zone for an extra two points. Most teams play it safe and go with the one point. Number three, field goal. Mm -hmm. At any That's time, the team with the ball of. can kick the ball between oh, the no. posts and over the crossbar. If you tackle the opposition player in their own end zone that was that's a, considered a safety isn't it 
What's, what do they call that? I know it's to do this, they must hand it to a teammate who will hold it down to the ground, ready for the kicker to make a kick. A successful kick scores three points. Number four, a safety. If the defense tackles an offensive player behind his own goal line, the defending team scores two points. The game is played in four the NFL 50 minutes right for a combined playing time of 60 minutes. High score at the end oh, of 60 minutes, 60 minute quarters, for a combined... Four 15 minute quarters. Time playing okay. time of 60 minutes. High score at the end of 60 minutes, wins. Ties are rare in American football, and overtime periods are played if necessary to determine the winner. Different leagues have different rules about tie games. Is that it? Is that all I need to know? Ties are rare. I can understand that it, like, after over, like, it'd be rare for it to go into, like, triple to overtime, but I'm assuming that it's not that uncommon for the scores to be locked at the end of regulation time. Like, it's not, that, that happens, again, it doesn't happen all the time, it happens reasonably regularly in our codes here, where I don't understand if that's the case. Surely overtime's not that uncommon. Well, you're almost there, but American football is filled with lots of rules, mm. and this you'll need to understand a few more of them before playing or watching a game. For example... So, so far I've been 90% across what he said so far. That was I was already aware of most of this. Fumble. If a ball carrier drops the ball, yeah. that's a fumble. Any player on the field can recover the ball by diving onto it. The team that recovers a fumble gets possession of the ball. Interception. If, a, if the offensive player recovers the fumble the pass is still incomplete though isn't it so they would just retain the possession of the ball but they would have to go back to where the previous play was run from i'm assuming because otherwise they could just tap the ball along the ground until they got to wherever they wanted to and dive on it i don't know an aggressive defense can regain possession of the ball by catching or intercepting passes Great. that are meant for players on the other team. Both fumble recoveries and interceptions can be run back into the end zone for touchdowns. Sack. If the ah, that's where they tackle the quarterback, but he's not in the end zone. Defense tackles a quarterback whilst he has possession of the ball. This is known as a sack. This is detrimental to the offense as a down is wasted, and this usually results in a loss of yards. Incomplete pass. If a pass intended to receive it hits the ground first, or is thrown out of bounds, this is ruled an incomplete pass. A down is wasted, and play restarts from the spot of the last down. Penalty. So, the fumble is not considered an incomplete pass, based on what he said there. So, that's all I'm confused about. If someone can help me out with that, is, is, is if a fumble is recovered by an offensive player, does the play continue from where they get the ball, or does it go back to where the previous player was ran? If a player breaks one of the rules, referees will throw flags onto the field. They will determine who made the foul, and how many yards his team should be penalised. Challenge. If a coach disagrees with the decision on the field, they can throw red flags onto the field. The previous play will then be reviewed, and if the challenge is successful, the ruling on the field is reversed. If the challenge is unsuccessful and the ruling on the field stands, they forfeit one timeout. Oh, that's a good timeout. rule. I like that. If a team wants to stop the clock to regroup, take a break. Do they only get one challenge, or can they have multiple? I'm, I, I missed that. Maybe, maybe it was mentioned. Let me have a look. Coaches. If a coach disagrees with the decision on the field, they can throw red flags, flags. onto the field. The previous play will then be reviewed, and if the challenge is successful, the rule... So it just says flags. Is, is there a limit, or can they... I mean, obviously, if they are successful, can they just keep throwing them out there and not worry about it because they've still got all their timeouts? I quite like that rule. I feel like that could be implemented in, say, basketball, where you often get plays that they want to review, but they're worried because they only get the one challenge. Interesting. Ruling on the field is reversed. If the challenge is unsuccessful and the ruling on the field stands, they forfeit one timeout. Timeout. If a team wants to stop the clock to regroup, take a break, or discuss strategy, they are allowed three timeouts per half. Each timeout lasts 60 seconds, and players get a break of 12 minutes at half time. Now, this is a lot to take in, but once you start playing or watching American football, the rules will become clear. If you found this video at all helpful, please like, share with your. 
Unfortunately, Nen, I probably didn't. I didn't learn too much. It was stuff like right at the end there. The quarterback took a knee. Now, my uh, my understanding is that that kills the play. But in what situation would you do that as opposed to just taking the tackle or as opposed to... Is it because the clock's running right down really low, you've got a lead, you don't want to risk the opposition getting the ball? Is that what it is? You're just running the clock out? Or there's got to be a strategy to that. But there's, there's so many rules. Like, I've tried... Let's say I have watched the occasional bit that's come on, and I've tried to watch it, and I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And, um... I like the, the grabbing the face mark. I know that's illegal. But there's so many subtle rules, and unfortunately, he didn't go over any of those. He just went over the very broad basics. So... If anyone who's watching this has a link to something that is maybe a little bit more in depth that can, I really I, like. I I need to know all that stuff before I can really sink myself into a sport because I hate being confused and watching it. I just lose interest straight away. Also, I find it really hard to follow a sport if I don't have a favourite team. So, my favourite team in basketball. is the Boston Celtics. Who should I go for in the NFL? And tell me why. With that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you very much for the recommendation, and I'll see you on the next one.